bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Well, the draft is rapidly approaching, and we are still finalizing our mock draft, which we will have probably out Monday of next week. And, well, if you've watched the channel before, you know that we, we have been swaying back and forward between our picks. We were, for the longest time, in the offensive lineman first round pick category. We are we are still huge Andrew Thomas fans. But recently after some deliberation, some conversations and some film preparations, we have started to slowly move the needle over to Isaiah Simmons. Now, the question is, and we're not going to give our choice yet, but you know, I was thinking about it the other day. And I'm always remembering the old adjective, 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 adjective. Yes, I can never get that word right because you get sometimes you get confused with adjective. Um, and that is that defense wins championships. And that's all you, you know what? That's all you hear even going back to when I played in college. It was, you know, that's the thing, you know, defense wins championships. You know, it's, you know, the offense is for show. You know, you know, we're the ones that, you know, we're the ones that stops everything else. You know, it's it's even like the golf analogy, you know, you, you know, you, you drive for show, you putt for the dough. So I was thinking to myself, how true is it that defense wins championships? And I was thinking, if that's the case, you know, then it's a non-starter that, you know, we should automatically be going to who may be the best linebacker in, you know, who is the best, who I feel is the best linebacker in the draft and who I feel is probably one of the better linebackers to come out in the last five years. So I was thinking back to the Super Bowls, and I'm going to just take a quick look at the last four Super Bowls. Now, if, if we're going by the old, uh, old, well, you know what, first of all, let's, let's stop that. Let's go back in the Super Bowl history. You know, if you take a look at the scores at the Super Bowl, it's never really been a defensive battle. I mean, the first two Super Bowls were 35-10, 33-14. It wasn't until the Joe Namath the Super Bowl that we had, you know, the 16-7 Super Bowl, you know, against the Baltimore Colts, Colton Colts, Colts. And then, you know, then you had scores like 23-7, you know, we did have the 16-13, 24-3, 24-7, 16-10, 32-14, you know, it's so, you know, we've had some early on defensive battles, but, you know, but if you start getting into the 80s, I mean, you take a look at even going back to, um, you know, let, let's go back to 80, 84. You're looking at 38-9, then 38-16, then 46-10, 39-20, New York Giants, 42-10. You know, then we had the, we had the, we had the game in 89 where, you know, it was 16, uh, 2016 with, um, uh, with the 49ers and the Bengals. But then we jump back into 55-10. And then we had the best Super Bowl probably on the history of the planet in 1991, uh, 20 to 19, New York Giants beating the Buffalo Bills. Now that was a de- that was a Super Bowl that was won by defense. But if we take a break, if we take a look now at the last four Super Bowls, let's just start with this last year. You know, Chiefs 31, 49ers 20. What I like to look at is I like to look at I, I don't go by total offense. I go by yards. And points when I rank defenses. So I, and I, you know, so those are usually my two big factors. So if you take a look at it, the Chiefs were in yardage. They were in offense. They were six in yards, and defense they were seventeenth. And points they were fifth in offense, and they were seventh on defense. And then you know, not to say anything about the 49ers, they were actually fourth in offense and yards, second in yards and defense. And at points, their offense was second, and their defense was eight. And they gave up 31 points. So by looking just at the yards, you would say, well, the 49ers are the better statistical defensive team. And in some ways, they were a better statistical offensive team. So, you know, it's it's to me that's, okay, you really can't say that champion, uh, defense won that championship. You know, I think in a lot of ways, the 49ers, Jimmy Garofalo shot himself in the foot repeatedly, so that caused more of a problem. Now, but if you go into the 18, I mean, if you go into the next Super Bowl, you know, you're looking at New England 13, the Rams three. New England in total yards and offense was fourth. Defense, they were seventh. 
and points in offense, they were fifth, and defense, they were 21st. They had the classic bend but do not break defensive style, but the problem is they gave up way too many big plays. And that's why they were 21st. And that's why they were 21st in points. Now you take it flip over to the Rams. Rams had Rams and offense had the second ranked in the offense in yards. Defense they were 20th. Offense again in points they were second. Defense they were 19th. So by looking at that statistically, having the 20th and the 19th for defensive yards and uh, points, you would think that the New England Patriots would have scored more than 13 points. And considering they had fourth and fifth ranked offense on points and yardage. So again, is defense really winning that championship? And then if we go into the next Super Bowl, Eagles 41, you know, New England 33. You're looking at the offense for the Eagles. You know, they were seventh in yards, third in points. Defense were fourth in yards and fourth in points. So they statistically had a good offense and a good defense. Now, New England was, again, they were number one offense in yards and number two offense in points. But defense in yards, they were 29th. And defense and points allowed, they were fifth. Now, again, that's, again, the typical, you know, giving up a lot of yards, but we're not giving up a lot of scores. So taking a look at these two teams, statistically, was that a defensive battle? No. It, it was two offensive running up and down the field. And the last one I want to look at real quick is New England Falcons. I mean, we, we are taking a look at New England that year being the fourth-ranked offense in yards, third-ranked in points. Defense, they were eighth in yards and first in points. Against the Atlanta Falcons, who were second in yards and first in points on offense, but 25th in yards and 27th on defense. So, again, we take, we take a look at that. They did give up 34 points. But they also scored 28, and we know they probably should, the Falcons probably should have won that game. So what I'm sitting here thinking to myself is recently going even back to the last, I don't know, seven, eight Super Bowls. You know, I would say going up to the Giants' last Super Bowl in 2012, the 21-17. Defense was not dominant. Defense was sitting there and was not the dominant factor in all these. It was the offense. So looking at that, should I sit there and say to myself, well, you know what we need to do? I need to sway my pick back to Andrew Thomas, the big offensive lineman out of Georgia. To me, I think he could possibly be a generational talent. I'm not saying he's going to be Jonathan Ogden, but I'm saying that he could be a player that you could plug in the line for the next 10 years and not worry about. No, he could be that type of talent. Maybe not the next 10 years, the way free agency is. In the way, you know, in the way the salary cap works. But he could be that guy. And he could be the guy that keeps Daniel Jones upright and opens up huge holes for Saquon Barkley and then moves forward. Because again, if we're looking at the statistics, defense did not, in the last really three out of the four Super Bowls, defense did not win the day. Yes, in the 41 33 battle against the Eagles in New England, the fumble on defense was a factor. Yes. But they also gave up 33 points. So it was a track meet. You can't really say that. So looking at it statistically, maybe I'm thinking, okay, well, let's jump back and switch back to the Andrew Thomas camp because if we have a prolific offense, you know, and we have a manageable defense, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not going to say manageable, but I'm going to say serviceable defense you know, maybe we can go to the playoffs in the Super Bowl that way. But then I look at some of the statistics again and say, okay, well, Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Simmons, <laughs> I'm a Nick fan too, so, you know, I get those confused. Isaiah Simmons could be a, a, a game changer in so many different ways on defense. And then if you take a look at, like I said, you take a look at the New England Super Bowl, the 13-3 Super Bowl, you know, we're, we're looking at New England not having a great offense. I mean, excuse me, great defense. Again, they were 7th in yards and 21st in uh, points. But they still held the Rams to three points. I know the Todd Gurley situation and the Jared Goth issues was part, played part of that. But like I said, I don't feel anymore that you can really sit there and say statistically that defenses now win championships. 
And that's why I'm a little confused because I'm thinking to myself, you know, like I said, you know, if then that's the case, maybe I slide back over to Andrew Thomas. Let's build that line. You know, let, let's get a center in the second round, maybe draft a linebacker in the third. You know, I think William Gay Jr. will probably be still around, third round the linebacker. So, you know, I mean, it's it's interesting because, like I said, you, you try to go through the, all the old sayings, and it's like, you know, and you take it, but then you really do a statistical breakdown and actually look at the scores of a lot of Super Bowls. Defense was not prevalent. I would say defense was not prevalent in like 75% of the Super Bowls. You know, that maybe defense got you to the Super Bowl, but I'm not thinking that it's as prevalent as it used to be. I think the pendulum in some ways is shifting back towards the offense. You know, I, I think now we're also shifting back towards having teams having a strong running game. I, I'm I'm not going to say that the, the Chiefs are, are an aberration because they have a generational talent in Mahomes. But I think teams are seeing that, you, you know, you know, like I said, you, you're going to you're going to drive for show, putt for dough. So, you know what, you're going to you're going to you know, you got the passing game, but you're going to use that run game to set everything up. So maybe going back to thinking that way. Maybe we should slide back to Andrew Thomas, but then you think about it. It could all shift again. The pendulum could swing the other way. You know, defense is tied. We go back to, you know, online, you know, we go back to the Giants football the way it used to be. You know, the crunch bunch, the big blue wrecking crew. You know, we need defensive help just as much as we need offensive line help. But comparing the two players and using the old, the old sayings, maybe we can't sit there and think, it's time to adjust our thinking to just let's have, you know, let's let's switch solely to defense. Let's now move to offense. I don't know. You know, but we're going to figure out this plan sometime next week. We are going to have our draft strategy out, and we're going to have our mock draft out on Monday. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, thanks for listening.